Today we're going to start by showing you a few of the finished projects. This chair has definitely been a labor of love. It started as a cracked red or burgundy kind of vinyl with wooden, sort of I would say probably in a walnut finish, um, handles and or arms and legs. And after many, many layers of paint, I used Napoleonic blue mixed with water. I probably did seven coats of paint on it. Then I did a wash in graphite just around all of the edges where, where a darker color might have collected over the years. My goal was to make it look like an old blue leather chair. The last thing I did when I had all of the paint on it was to wax it in dark wax. And what I found is I'm happy with the finish on this chair. It looks like an old leather chair that probably the leather is getting near the end of its life. There are still cracks in it, but it came up with a beautiful shine. It has some color changes in the texture of the way the material absorbed the paint. The arms are a little bit lighter, which would be natural because that's where you're, there would be the most wear on the arms and possibly on the seat. This was all done in old ochre, and then it had primer red underneath to give it a little pink hue. It had bright gold and um, warm gold gilding on it, and then the whole thing just worn back. The whole point was to make it look like an old chair, and I think it was successful. The other two projects that we worked on in the last couple of shows were a small dressing stool that we painted in graphite and waxed in dark wax and then reupholstered. That's complete. And one of my favorite projects, one of the most fun ones to do was the little decoupage tray. So simple, so satisfying to have something done that you could do really just in a couple of hours. This week we're going to work on transforming a mirror that has a fairly inexpensive frame on it, kind of a plasticky finish, but it's a nice size mirror and I like it for one of the bedrooms upstairs, the French room. So I thought what might be a good idea would be to make it a richer, darker kind of frame. Something so that it stands out on the walls up there because we've painted those a very pale pink. This mirror just disappears. You can't, it has no interest, nothing interesting about it at all. In this book, the Quick and Easy Paint Transformations, there are two different mirror projects and we're going to borrow from a bit of both of them. So the first one, this was a pine carved mirror and had quite a bit of detail and Annie has done this in just a single color and then brought back some of the paint or you know distressed it a little bit so you could see the wood carvings well we don't have wood carvings but we do have this raised detail of I think it's like a grape leaf and a, a grape or a, or a small berry all the way around it so we do want to kind of bring that pattern out but the other mirror goodness for post-it notes is a more elaborate mirror where she's done it in a dark color and then added a bit of gilding to kind of emphasize the detail. So we're kind of do a little bit of both. The first thing we're going to do is give it a base coat in Emperor Silk because then when we bring back the blue that we're going to put on it, we're going to come back to a red and red has been the accent in this room and then just touch it up with a little bit of gilding. So let's get started on that first coat. We're using Emperor Silk. You can tape your mirror so that you don't have to go along scraping, but honestly I find by the time I've taped it all, I could go around it with one of the razor blades and just clean it up so I don't bother to tape them anymore. The paint comes off it so easily. I am using a small round brush. I need my little round brush because I need to get into all these details. So we're just going to start, and I have washed the frame all off, and we're just going to work the paint brush right into all of these details. If this were an old mirror, an old glass, I would probably use a piece of cardboard or tape it off because the glass itself of the mirror might be a little bit more fragile, but this is modern. And I'm not worried about it being perfectly, I don't mind some texture in it. So all the way around here, on this side, so you can see it a little better. Make sure you get all the way into the edge of the glass. 
And that's the nice thing about the round brush is it wiggles in and really covers well. I've done a couple of mirrors and I find that you can really make a mirror fit your decor by painting it. Actually, any frame. Just wiggle it in. And the other thing is, this is a pretty fast project. Two coats of paint and a little bit of gilding. And mirrors, unlike furniture, don't have a whole lot of ed you know, sides and edges. They're just long pieces of trim. Now sometimes you'll notice the paint, the first coat especially, if we were doing this to, as a finished coat, we'd have to do a second coat. Because it was kind of a shiny finish, it doesn't always stick as well as it might do to a, a painted piece of wood. So you would definitely have to do a second coat on this because you can see where I have a few little streaks. Well, we'll just go on and we'll finish this up. And set it to dry for a little bit and come back and do our second coat. My Emperor Silk has dried on the frame and there are a few places I didn't get into every little nook and cranny, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to go over it now and I'm using Opusson Blue. I chose these two colors because they have a good strong contrast for one, but also they're both colors that I used in the French room and they're colors we've used in other places in the house if this mirror ends up being somewhere else. So small brush and right back over the red. And I'm not too worried if I don't get complete coverage because I am going to pull back a little bit of this blue. I want to see hints of the red coming through. Just go down the edges. almost am dry brushing it in places so that the red has a chance to come through. I don't know if you can see, but I, when I pull my brush back, wipe off some of the paint and I pull my brush back, I can get a streaky finish of the red coming through on the blue, and that's what I want. So you have, when you're working like that, you have to do a side at a time. You can't, you have to work with the paint being wet. And I don't have lots of paint on my brush this time. Just the very, just the tip of the brush has color on it. When I pull that back, I have to do it all in one stroke, too, so. And get into my corners. I don't want obvious places of red showing, because it should all just have a touch of blue. this up a little bit. I should have done this before, but just a little bit so that I can get underneath without scraping along the cloth on the long sides.
That's one of the handiest things is to have a few little pieces of wood and you can tell from the sight of those they've been painted many times. Put that on. Now, I want to come around to the side there because this is something we need to think about. This is a beveled corner. I need to make sure that my brush strokes go to the corner, but not over it. Because that would be a giveaway that I created this with paint. I, need, I don't want a crisscross here. I don't want a brush stroke going this way and then a brush stroke going this way. I want it to end just gently using the tip of my brush. And then drag the paint back, wipe a little off, and drag it again. I won't get it even, and that's fine. I just want to create that a little hint of red. Maybe even a little bit of a hint of the original mirror finish coming through too. This is one of the finishes where less is more. I always go back and add a bit of paint. But it gets harder as the paint dries to wipe it off. up to this side. This is where I need to, again, every corner I'm going to have to just be careful to not get that cross hatch. side. Kind of drag your paint along. I think I found that I have a tendency to put it in the middle of whatever I'm working with and then I can drag the paint from the middle. as I'm working. Just a touch more paint. It's kind of a half dry brush method. The brush has paint on it and I'm just if I were really dry brushing I would have started with a dry brush each time but I'm just Right in that paint. Before you put your brush away, have a look and see if it looks fairly even all the way around. I'm going to make sure that I got an edge. Oops, I just put my finger in it in here.
bit of shine right there that came through from the old paint. Sometimes what's happening is my paint, my wet paint is picking up the dried paint underneath because that red hasn't had very long to dry and it's stripping it off the shiny. I could sand and remove some of the shine of that original frame if I didn't want that to happen, but I don't mind a little hint of it coming through because we're going to do a little bit of gilding anyway. There. So I've got a little pop of red coming through. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and finish it up. So our mirror has dried. Now we need to finish it. If I leave it like this, it looks nice, but I would like it to have a little bit of a shine in that room. I'm going to use a little bit of dark wax to age it, but I don't want the whole thing to be dark. So I'm going to start with clear wax. I'm going to do, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you an example. I'm going to do a clear waxing here to fill in some of the spots. Some of, if I use clear wax first and then I dark wax, I can prevent the dark wax from being too dark. So we'll just work on one corner here. So I've got wax on all of this. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to wipe off a little bit of that, just the excess. And you have to wipe really carefully because it will very easily wipe back to what the original frame was. And I'm just going to take a little bit of, clear, of dark wax just on the edge and just brush it in. Actually, I'm not even going to do it that way. I'm going to use a cloth because I don't want the brush. I just want a hint of the dark. just along the edges. So I'm just going to get in to create a little bit more of this streaky look. And along the inside here. Sometimes with a cloth, and I should have put a glove on, I can control more than I can with the brush. So I'm just going to put a little edge on here. You can see it probably a little better when I go here. Put a little bit of the dark on. And then I'm going to wipe that off too. I just want to age it just a little bit. I'll wipe back what I don't want. And I'll have a little bit of a shine start to come through as well. Now, one thing when you're working with something that has a lot of the, the detail like this, you're going to find you get wax caught in it. Sometimes you actually have to get a brush, like an old toothbrush, and pick it out. But I find if you get it while the wax is still soft, you can pull out what you wanted to pull out. Now, one thing that's happening here is I'm getting a little bit of the original color of the frame. It was sort of a silvery color. There are two things I can do now. I could wipe that back a little bit more, but I have to be careful because I'm going to wipe off the wax, which I don't want to do. Or I can take a baby wipe. Baby wipe is very gentle. And I can just, using my finger, just gently rub and it will pull back just the top layer. It'll, it'll just go down to that top layer of finish. So all I'm doing is pulling out the detail. It'll take off the paint. It'll get saturated and I'll come back. So this is a way of sort of, it's opposite gilding. So I've got a nice silver with a little bit of red coming through there. The baby wipe has just a, a very soft emollient on it. So I can decide how much I want to come back if I want to leave the red instead of the blue. But the thing about the wipe is that I can, I can just keep refolding it, but because it's so pliable, I can, I can force it in and get a little bit more paint off and control it quite a bit. So this is going to take a little bit of time, 
but it's a very effective way to make use of what you already had here. So that's going to create a really nice finish. And then I'll buff this and I'll have a great shine. I'll take my little painter's edge knife, window scraper, glass scraper, and scrape out the paint. And I have a brand new window or a brand new mirror for the French room. So thank you for joining me. It's um, always fun to see something you already have in your house transformed into something that really suits your own personal taste. It's a great way to remake the old into the new, and I invite you to come into the store to discuss your project with us anytime. We have so many ideas, it's crazy. Probably as many as you do. So come on in. Thank you very much for joining me, and we look forward to seeing you next week.